To help us understand server-side request forgery, first we need to take a look at microservice architecture. In modern applications, be it mobile or web applications, the front-end application often talks to other applications to gather data. This is because the various applications are broken up into smaller apps that each handle a specific part of the customer experience or the transaction. That way we don't end up with monolith applications that can't easily be reused. So let's take a look at a normal request. The user using their phone, tablet, or other device reaches out to the front end application. The web server takes in the initial request and passes the request on to the app server. And the app server then reaches out to the backend web services, which are generally fronted by a web tier of their own, passes the request on to the backend application. Backend application either provides some type of functionality or performs some type of transaction. It may even talk to other data sources or even other web services itself. In any case, the information comes back to the original front end application and is returned to the user. In a server side request forgery, the application has made the mistake of allowing the user some measure of control over the URL that the front end application is going to speak with on the back end. So instead of sending in the intended URL, the user is able to influence or override that and send in a forged URL in that parameter. The request goes to the vulnerable application, which then calls the unintended backend service instead of the correct backend service. The unintended service provides some kind of unintended functionality, transaction, or otherwise fetches sensitive information, returns it to the vulnerable app, which forwards it back to the browser. And now the user is able to see information or access functionality or transactions they otherwise should not have been able to do. We can take a look at an example here. So in the Matilda Day application, we're going to go to Broken Access Control, Insecure Direct Object References, and Server Side Request Forgery. And there's a page that is supposed to just test connectivity to the server. So we click the button. The application reaches out to a web service to check for connectivity to the back end web service. In this scenario, the web service is acting as middleware or a back end application. Let's take a closer look at the web service, sort of a peek behind the curtain, just to help us understand what's happening better. So this web service happens to be vulnerable to SQL injection, and it's available as a RESTful service, which makes it easier to test with. So we click on the test link, we see that we visit the web service directly. Again, this is looking at this from the application's point of view, just to help for understanding. And so it fetches this information. Let's go back to the front end page. So now we're back from the perspective of the user who's using this page. One of the problems with this page, at least in security level zero, is that it's vulnerable to the SSRF. There's a hidden parameter and the parameter is not supposed to, but it does give the user access to influence that backend URL. So if we go in here and we say edit as HTML, we can see the value of the web service URL here in the value field. And we can change the type from hidden to text, and that way we'll be able to see the field and you'd be able to see the value as well. So let's do that again. We're going to do edit as HTML. We're going to change the type from hidden to text. And then we'll mouse off to commit the change. And then you can see the hidden field with the URL inside of it. Now let's replace this with the URL that we took from 
the backend web service. So now when we hit test connectivity, instead of getting back that the connection was successful, we see that data was actually pulled from the web service. So this backend web service happens to be vulnerable to SQL injection. So let's go ahead and do this test again. And we'll start to get a sense of the problems caused by SSRF because now we can use the front end application as a means to get at these back end applications, either extracting data or trying to exploit the back end applications, despite the fact that they're hidden behind firewalls and other protections. So, as before, I'm just going to edit the HTML. We're going to change the type from hidden to text, or we could just change the value right here. There's or you could also use a proxy server like Burp Suite, which would be the easiest way to do this. Lots of different ways. But since we're doing a simple demo here, we'll just do it right here in the field. Now, instead of passing in the value Adrian here, we're gonna pass in the SQL injection that causes issues with this application. So in this case, you can do it lots of different ways. If you look online, you'll probably see something like single quote or one equals one. This is the canonical example uh, with a dash dash space afterwards since this uh, backend server is MySQL or MariaDB. The space after the dash dash is important. But there's also other SQL injections you can do like uh, using the, uh, the binary comparison operator uh, comparing it to zero and then a hash will work just as well. Regardless, it's not a commentary so much on the SQL injection, but just the point being that we're able to get at this backend web service that we normally shouldn't be able to get to using the front end application as a way of doing this horizontal escalation. So we send the request and this SQL injection doesn't work. Let's try another one. And we also may need to encode some of these values because this hashtag is actually a normal part of a URL. So you think like uh, hashtag normally means scrolling down to a certain point in a page. So we have the front end service that is reaching out to the back end service, but it's doing so almost like a web browser in a sense. So we have to be careful with any characters that are in the SQL injection that would be considered part of the U, uh, URL itself. And we have to escape those so they don't get eaten by the web server on the way in. And that's easy to do. We just use encoding to do that. So you can use any online encoder. You can also uh, just use Burp Suite to do the encoding or any kind of URL encoding tool, um, anything will do. So let's say we go to just any site that does the encoding and then we'll say encode here and then we'll go down and grab the encoded version. And now the web server won't mistake these characters as part of the URL but they'll just consider them as data to pass on through to the backend service. We go through the exercise as before. And we wanna change the, the URL, but we wanna use the encoded version of the value. So we'll just copy the rest of it from here, from our previous example. And we'll hit test connectivity. And now we can see that the injection worked thanks to the encoding and it pulled back the information, all of the information from the server. So in our story, we were trying to test connectivity but because of that mistake that was made in the Matilda application, we were able to change the hidden value of the hidden field to a new URL, which was sent to the vulnerable app, but then turn around and made the request to the web service we specified instead of just checking for connectivity like it was supposed to. That went back to the database. In our case, we used an SQL injection even on top of that 
to manipulate the query that went to the backend database, grab all the data, bring it back to the vulnerable app, which forwarded it back into our browser.